start. Yeah. Hi everyone. Today we are going to discuss about the latest concept about fatty liver disease. Previously, any person come to the OPD with an ultrasound diagnosis of fat liver disease, we asked to, used to ask the patient whether you take alcohol. 90% of the people tell doctor, I don't take alcohol. Then you ask whether the people is having jaundice, hepatitis B, C, or any iron with copper deposition in the liver. But nowadays we know that 80% of liver disease or fat liver that you pick up by ultrasound is no longer alcohol, no longer hepatitis mediated. It is a non-alcoholic fat liver disease. Previously, it was known as NAFLD or NASH. Now it is known as MASLD or MASH. That is metabolic dysfunction associated steatotic liver disease, metabolic dysfunction associated steatohepatitis. So basically understand 80% of liver disease that we see in the population now is not due to alcohol, not due to hepatitis B, C, iron or copper deposition. It is due to metabolic syndrome. So that is known as NAFLD and NASH. Now the guidelines say that 25% of the normal individuals above the age of 20 years have ultimately ultrasound or blood test diagnosis of fat liver disease. Vice versa, 90% of obese people, fatty people, if you do an ultrasound or liver function, have a fat liver disease and 65% of diabetic people have a fat liver disease. So just roughly understand one point only. Previously, any person with ultrasound fat liver, we used to think that he takes alcohol or any jaundice or hepatitis. Now we know that 80% of ultrasound or blood test showing fat liver is a non-alcoholic fat fat liver disease which can occur in diabetic people, obese people or people with a BMI more than 23 and 25% of normal people, 90% of obese people, 65% of diabetic people have a fat liver disease. So how to approach a fat liver disease? Suppose you are doing an ultrasound abdomen for a kidney stone or a uterus or ovary cyst but ultrasound picks up a grade 1 to grade 2 fat liver disease. Do you need to go with the report to a gastroenterologist or an endocrinologist always? No. Number one, you ask yourself whether you are taking alcohol. You think that you have never taken alcohol, look for hepatic markers. Do four markers, HBSAG, anti-HCV, ferritin, iron level, copper level, ceruloplasmin, and sometimes antibody. So fat liver disease, that is non-alcoholic fat liver disease, or mass LD is a diagnosis of exclusion. Don't think that every fatty lady or fatty guy coming with a liver fat deposition is always non-alcoholic. It can be alcoholic, it can be due to old hepatitis. Some people tell doctor, I had jaundice 20 years back when I was studying in pre-degree or 10 standard, that itself can be hepatitis B, C. Some people tell doctor, my mother died of liver disease. It can be a hemochromatosis or a Wilson's disease. In the family, we know that 80% of liver disease is non-alcoholic, but before attributing to non-alcoholic, think whether the patient has taken alcohol, HBSAG, anti-HCV, ferritin, ceruloplasmin, and DLK1. Then how do you go forward? Number first, you ask for a liver function test, mainly SGOT, SGPT, alkaline phosphorus, GGT. So the approach is any patient ultrasound finding a fat liver disease, you ask the patient alcohol, hepatitis test, which I told you, HBSAG, anti-HCV, ferritin, ceruloplasmin, anti-LK1, your alcohol is negative, hepatic markers are negative, then you ask for a liver function test. Liver function mainly SGOT, SGPT, alkaline phosphorus, GGT, everything is normal. We usually think that it's a NAFLD or or a metabolic dysfunction associated steatotic liver disease. How do you treat that? First and foremost is diet, exercise, weight loss. Now study says that 7% of weight loss can reduce fatty liver and 10% of weight loss can even regress cirrhosis. Suppose a person comes and tells doctor I am diagnosed with fat liver disease 15 years back. Now I did my ultrasound doctor. Should cirrhosis doctor, I have never taken alcohol. I don't boost. I don't go and have any smoking, alcohol, hepatitis, but I am having cirrhosis. What to go forward? Number first and foremost, you lose 10% of weight loss, the liver cirrhosis and fibrosis can even regress. So 100 kilogram person losing 10% is 10 kilogram. He becomes 90. Fat liver can be reduced by almost 30 to 40 percentage. He loses 10% body weight. Fat liver or fibrosis itself can be reduced by 50 percentage. Second scenario, suppose a person comes and doctor, my weight was 100 kilogram. I was diagnosed with a non-alcoholic fat liver disease going to a cirrhosis. You ask me for a weight loss. I reduce my weight from 100 to 80. Still my ultrasound shows grade 2 fat liver disease or I am doing a fibro scan. Fibro scan shows a liver stiffness more than 12. How to go forward? So a condition where a person is not taking alcohol, not having hepatitis, but ultrasound shows grade 2, grade 3 fat liver disease. A fibro scan for the liver shows a liver fibrosis more than 12. The patient is exercising, 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 losing 20 kilograms of body weight. 100 kilogram, 10% of body weight versus 10 kilogram. He is losing 20% of body weight. Still his ultrasound diagnosis shows grade 3 fat liver. Fibro scan, the scoring of metabolic stiffness is still more than 12 what are the drugs to control the fat liver disease. Number first and foremost drug that is now approved for fat liver disease is the anti-diabetic drug of pyogitazone. 
pyogotasone ractose 30 to 45 mg reduces fat liver disease by 75%. Now we know in GCC countries in India, we have two drugs to reduce the weight loss. Two injectable agents, semaglutide osambic and trastaptide monjaro. So your pyogotasone reduces NASH by 75%. Injection for weight loss, trastaptide and that is monjaro and semaglutide osambic reduces fat liver by 60%. And the new US FD approved anti-non-diabetic, that's not, these two are anti-diabetic drugs. Two new US FD approved new drug to reduce the fat liver disease is known as Rasmitro. That's a thyroid hormone receptor antagonist which reduces fat liver by 29%. So just understand the algorithm before I conclude. Number one, you are doing ultrasound. Ultrasound or liver function shows fat liver disease in 25% of the normal people, 90% of obese people, 65% of diabetic people you do an ultrasound, it shows fat liver disease. Don't stop with that. Just ask the patient you take alcohol. Patient else, no doctor, I have not taken alcohol. Then ask them to do five test, HBSAG, anti-HCV, ferritin, ceruloplasmin, anti lkm Hepatitis B, C, I and copper, antibodies negative, then it's a pure non-alcoholic fat liver disease. Ask the patient for a liver function. Liver function shows SGOT, SGPT, actin for this GGT normal. Think that it is a benign condition of a mass LD, but still ask the patient for a fibro scan. Fibro scan shows the liver stiffness. Liver stiffness of metabolic rating more than 12. It's high risk. The patient may go to cirrhosis. How to intervene? 7% of weight loss. 100 kilogram person, 7 kilogram of weight loss can reduce fat liver. 100 kilogram person, 10% of weight loss. 10 kilogram weight loss can reduce even fibrosis and cirrhosis of liver. Suppose a patient is losing weight, but still the fat liver is not coming down or metabolic rating of liver stiffness is still more than 12. The first line treatment is pyogotasone, which reduces NASH by 75%. Second is the weight loss agent, Traceptate Monjaro and Semaglutide Osambic, which reduces fat liver by 60%. The new US FDA approved drug for reduction of F2, F3 fibrosis, Rasmitro, which is not available in GCC countries or India, only still now available in the US, which reduces NASH by 29%. And the cholesterol rolling drug, statin and vitamin E, 400 mg BD, and the anti-diabetic drug of SJ Twin Beta, DAPAC and EMBA, can reduce NASH by 20%. In short, understand, you may be having a fat liver disease now. After 5 years, you may be having a fat liver disease progressing to a non-alcoholic steward to hepatitis. So first, you are having just a grade 1 fat liver disease. You are not exercising, you are eating, eating and piling up of fat without taking any pyogotasone, without taking statin, without even taking vitamin E. After 5 years, the doctor does the ultrasound. It was grade 1, now it is grade 3. How to go forward? Then you know, your NAFLD or MASLD has progressed to NASH. You are not doing anything, not exercising. After 10 years, you are doing ultrasound. Doctor said, now you are having cirrhosis. You are having end-stage liver disease. Then also, if you don't bother, after 10 years, you will be having a hepatocellular a carcinoma or liver failure. So don't think that every person, suppose a lady after pregnancy develops fat liver disease, tomorrow she is not going to have liver failure. It is just like a kidney failure with diabetes. You are having a microalbinuria, macroalbinuria and kidney failure occurs after 10 to 25 years, just like that. A lady after 25 years after pregnancy, grade 1 fat liver disease, she doesn't exercise. After 40 years, she may be having a body weight of 80 kg. It progresses to a NASH. After 50 years, she may be again maintaining 80 or 85. That time, ultrasound is cirrhosis. That time also, she doesn't pick up at 70 years, she may be doing ultrasound, it can be diagnosed as a hepatocellular carcinoma. So don't think that fat liver rapidly progresses to cirrhosis or hepatocellular carcinoma unless you are an alcoholic. So alcoholic liver disease plus metabolic syndrome that can coexist together. So normally fat liver disease is known as mass LD, metabolic dysfunction associated with state total liver disease. If an obese person takes alcohol, the risk is much more higher. That is known as met LD, metabolic syndrome and alcoholic liver disease. That is much more dangerous. A fatty person takes more alcohol, two beer drug per or three pecs per day, he is having double chance of promotion to hepatocellular carcinoma. So don't think that every disease occurs in a fine morning. Prevention is always better than a cure. That is why you now JAMA, JAPI, all the recommendations this January tells that whenever any person comes as a diabetic, obese or history of alcohol or father, mother, anyone having chronic liver disease, number one, go a FIP4 scoring and go for a fibro scan. Fibro scan is the liver stiffness scan. Fibro scan hardly costs in India 2000 rupees here. Majority of the insurance covers that. Fibro scan shows liver stiffness more than 12. You are at risk of having a chronic liver disease. Go for diet, exercise, weight loss, pyogotasone, 
semaktu rasmik trusted monjero rasmik trom or a vitamin E 400 milligram BD or nesteatin bitter or a cholesterol lowering tablet. The statin, statin, whatever you are taking, the statin or cholesterol lipid or whatever it is, but you are having a liver stiffness less than eight, you have less chance of cirrhosis. But always keep a follow. So basically understand. Previously diabetes person 70 person used to die of a heart attack. Even now we know that 50 to 60 percent diabetic patient die of a heart attack. But 10 to 20 percent of diabetic patients are nowadays dying of a fat liver disease progressing to hepatocellular carcinoma and liver failure. So that is why every diabetic patient, every obese person, every person with family, father, mother having a liver disease, every person with even one or two drink of alcohol intake per day has to check the liver function, has to do the fibro scan and act accordingly. And basically understand alcohol, there is no safe limit of alcohol. Some people come and say, doctor, can you take one drink of alcohol or two drink of alcohol? Now the American Association of Clinical Oncology says that alcohol just like smoking and asbestosis is a type 1 carcinogen. Previously, we used to tell that after one drink of alcohol per day in a female and two drink of alcohol per day in a male is approved. American Heart Association still now says that after one drink of alcohol in a female and two drink of alcohol in a male is approved. But American Association of Clinical Oncology says that even one drink of alcohol per day can promote cancer. The three type 1 carcinogen are smoking, alcohol and asbestosis. And understand the equivalence of alcohol. 30 ml of whiskey, brandy, vodka is equal into 120 ml of wine is equal into 300 ml of beer. Some people tell, doctor, I have two beer, two beer, nothing. I don't take any peg at all, whiskey, brandy, nothing. 30 ml of whiskey, brandy, vodka is equal into 120 ml of wine is equal into 300 ml of beer. So you take 300 ml of beer, that is equal into taking a 30 ml of whiskey, brandy, vodka. You are taking two 300 ml beer, small can, it is equal into taking a 30 to 60 ml of whiskey, brandy, vodka. So whatever it is, understand 80% of liver disease or fat liver disease that we see now is a non-alcoholic fat liver disease. 20% can be alcohol, hepatitis B, C and non-alcoholic fat liver progress to cirrhosis occurs in 20% of the people, 80% less in progress. The moment you find out a fat liver disease by ultrasound liver function, go and meet an endocrinologist or a gastroenterologist, take adequate action, keep a follow up with the fibro scan liver function or a FIP4 scoring and prevent the progression to hepatocellular carcinoma or liver failure or cirrhosis. Thank you.